So it is my pleasure to start this conference with an amazing talk by uh, Shilpa Garga. I um, know her for uh, quite some time from her work on haplotyping and genotyping. And now she is leading a small group at the University of Copenhagen. And uh, so thank you again. I think you are a wonderful uh, beginning of this uh, conference, Shilpa. And, uh, Please go ahead with your talk. Thank you very much. I will share my screen. I hope you see my Perfect. slides all right. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much to the organization organizers for inviting me today. And thanks everyone for joining my talk. Um, I'm Shilpa Gurk. I'm a tenure track assistant professor in Department of Biology at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark. And the topic of my talk is advanced high resolution approaches with their potential applications in human health and biodiversity genomics. So yeah, as we know, um, fully phased high resolution genomes, for example, humans are deployed where there are two haplotypes. And whereas in biodiversity, these the copies may range from two to 12 or even beyond. So we want to know the fully reconstructed genomes to study any variations associated with diseases or the genome evolution. And advancements in sequencing technologies such as long reads, especially the HIFI mode and the ONTQ20 and the long range information from HIC is enabling new opportunities to reconstruct these fully phased genomes at a very high resolution as a single base pair resolution. So now the question is how can we leverage these data types to reconstruct the haplotype resolved genomes? Yeah, it has many applications. For example, in biodiversity, it's enabled to identify genetic variants that point to higher susceptibility to environment stressors and conservative strategies. And also it impacts evolutionary and comparative genomics. So a bit of background on the sequencing technologies. For example, in the PetBio HiFi, you start with the high molecular weight DNA and then you ligate the adapters which lead these annealing of the primers and the DNA is circularized. And then you uh, perform the sequencing in a repeated passes here and then you get a bunch of sequencing reads. After that, you perform a consensus of these reads to produce the final highly accurate long reads. So these reads have an average read length of about 20 kilo base pairs, and they're highly accurate of about 99% accuracy. And then there is a high C technology that captures the spatially close located segments. And then I won't go in detail of the experimental techniques, but the main message is, for example, on the x-axis here, you see the genomic loci, and on the y-axis is the contact frequency map. So darker the red color is, higher is the contact frequency between two loci. So here, you, if you look closely in about 10 megabases of intervals, you see a very high contact frequency that suggests you have a high quality information in about intervals of 10 megabases. But if you go further apart, these contact frequencies get lower down. So HiC is a very informative data type for looking into the long range information. So once we have these new data types, how can we leverage this information to get the fully phased genome, as well as how to compare those genomes for further biological applications. So uh, traditionally, there have been various approaches to do phasing. One is the reference-based phasing. Essentially, you start with the reference genome and then you align the reads, and then you phase the reads and get the haplotypes. 
So the drawbacks of these approaches are they are reference bias and they doesn't work for structure variations that is that are very important to study um, for biological applications. Um, there are tools for doing the reference-based phasing, for example, WhatsApp, HapCut, and many more. And, and then to overcome the reference bias, there are de novo style approaches, for example, where you start with the reads directly and try to reconstruct the genome directly from the reads. For example, here you are given these reads, R1, R2, R3, and you would like to reconstruct the haplotypes from these reads. So there are two ways to solve this problem. One is Debrugin graph approach, as many of you probably already know. So you break the reads to fixed size words, and each node is a word, and the connections are the overlaps between these words. So here, each node is a word, and then connections are the overlap. And in the overlap graph approach, you take each node as a read, and the connections are the overlaps again. So then you want to construct the haplotypes, which are essentially two paths through this graph. So, but in most of these approaches, what was done was to collapse the two haplotypes and there was a single consensus haploid um, genome. To overcome that approach, the main algorithm and idea that we proposed was to use the phasing information directly in the overlapping step. And what we do, we find the overlaps of the reads and we find the heterozygous SNPs. And on these SNPs, if the alleles, they match, then they belong, the reads belongs to the same haplotype, otherwise they belong to the different haplotype. And we encode this information in the form of a graph again. So here each read is a, each node is a read and the connections are actually the haplotype specific overlaps. So once you encode this information in the form of a graph, you see these beautiful structures like bubbles where each bubble has a common start and the end node here. And then these are the haplotypes or the alleles in a, um, in a bubble. And then what we do based on this as dip algorithm, we construct a haplotype aware unity graph using HIFIASM on the whole genome. So you get this HIFI unity graph. And then we perform the mapping of high C reads on top of this graph. So we use the distinct gamers between the alleles in a bubble, for example, this is a bubble here, and these are two allele paths. So first we find the heterozygous distinct k-mers between these alleles, and then use these k-mers as the anchors in the reads in the high C for mapping. And since we use a k-mer based approach, uh, we can perform this mapping in a highly efficient manner. For example, on the human genome, we can perform this in about two hours with 48 CPU threads. And once we are done with the phasing of where high C mapping, we make use of the maximum support of the reads to first find the paths through each component. So we find these, for example, here there are two reads that are supporting this allele to this one, and, and then there are two reads that are connecting here. So the haplotype paths, two haplotype paths are uh, going through these alleles in this component. And, and then we leverage the information of high C to connect the phased contigues across the components. So for doing that, we mainly use the neighborhood property, which is a highly valuable property for the high to capture the high C data characteristics which means for a given edge, if it's adjacent edges have a comparable read support, then a given edge is a good edge. Otherwise, these are erroneous. And we perform an iterative approach to, re for, to reconstruct the phase scaffold, essentially to, to connect the phase contigues in a proper orientation and order based on the neighborhood property to produce the phase scaffolds. 
So then to move from one genome to uh, more than one to hundreds of genomes. So we again use based, you work on the KMR based approach and find the heterozygous KMRs and then try to put this information in the graph form. And this is an ongoing work. So now too, we are also excited to apply these new graph-based and KMR-based approaches to new dif different types of species, including humans and non-humans. And we are co-leading efforts of ARGA for the sequencing and assembly, where the aim is to sequence all type of genomes in Europe. Um, including fungi, plants, and any type of different complexities. So, and we have uh, done some of the, assembled some of the insects genomes based on the data available from Darwin Tree of Life, many thanks to the team. So we found that we can assemble insects genome um, with high quality QVs of more than 50 and and 50s are on the whole chromosome scale and with complete genome sizes and in about in several hours uh, to assemble the insect genome and with the uh, reasonable compute and time resources. Next, we applied these methods to some of the clinically relevant regions in humans, for example, such as HLA. As we know, HLA is a highly polymorphic region and it's unique to every genome. And it has known to have associations with many psychiatric and autoimmune diseases. So we took our assemblies and we aligned them to the reference genome. So a darker the region is, higher is the divergence of this gene to the reference genome. So you see here HLA-AA, and then DRB, DQA, and DQB1, these are highly uh, polymorphic and highly divergent genes to the reference genome. So this suggests if we want to study these genomes, uh, we would like to do it in a de novo manner. Otherwise we may miss a lot of variations that are unique in these regions um, if we do the reference-based analysis. Next, the similar story with the Kia region, which is another highly polymorphic and has associations to many clinical regions in the human genome. So here you see uh, Kia DL4, DL3, they're highly divergent genes to the reference genome. And they are very valuable uh, if we would like to find the cause of some of these psychiatric diseases and want to find a cure for these diseases by finding the pathway these mutations are um, making a difference. So it's very important we uh, reconstruct this genome in a de novo manner and then perform comparisons without any bias to the reference genome. So next we took our assemblies and we found the structure variations using these assembly approaches and then we compared these SVs to the ground truth SVs available from genome in a bottle for the human genome. And on the x-axis, you see the length of the SVs ranging from 50 to more than 10,000. And on the, um, here on the right are the insertions, on the, right, on the left are the deletions. And then you here, we, you observe that the precision and recall, they're all more than 90%. So yeah, to conclude, um, here I presented you the latest um, sequencing methods, uh, for example, long reads and high C, and then how can we integrate these um, data types using, for example, graphs and KMR-based approaches in a rapid manner to produce fully phased genomes and the pan genomes. And they have potential applications in biodiversity and human health for underpinning the complex biology. And we have openings for postdocs, staff scientists. In case you are interested, please reach out. And I thank my mentors, collaborators, and my students. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your talk. So I am going to 
start with the first question. I'm also going to pass it in the chat so that uh, there is no uh, misunderstanding. When you talk about mapping reads to the haplotype resolved graph, are these the same reads you use to build the graph? I construct the graph from hi-fi reads and then the mapping is done for the hi-c reads. So they are different data types. The, another question is uh, the variance that you are comparing to the genome in a bottle set, uh, how did you call them? That's a good question. So right now I have used uh, the state of the art method, uh, dip call for, for calling the structure variations from these assemblies. But there's another way we can also call the variance directly from the graph. So that's still a work in progress. Okay. And does this mean that you use only PEC bio without short read sec? And it is also uh, possible to use also nanopore? That's a good question. So, uh, so at this moment, uh, we use long reads and high C, uh, but we are doing some experiments for the latest ONT data. Uh, uh, I have a different pipeline, which is actually designed mm -hmm. in the context in the ecosystem of VG which is to build a graph from the short reads first and then align the long reads. And these long reads can be erroneous reads. So that's a different work, but I haven't presented it. In case you are interested in short reads and with the combination of long reads, please, I will be glad to answer, let me know. And so, so the calls are pairwise or old versus old comparisons? Uh, so the SV calls are with respect to a reference genome, and then the it's a pairwise comparison to the genome in a bottle. For GWA, we need to genotype these complex sections. Do you have any ideas on how to approach this uh, for HLA? Uh, that's a good question. So we have uh, from the assemblies, I think it works once you have fully phased assemblies and you can run uh, this dip call works pretty well to call the structure variations in HLA. Then what looks like for the moment, the last question is what would be some limitations you would run into when applying this approach to auto polyploids? Yeah, so in principle, this because this whole approach is ploddy agnostic. So in principle, it should work for any ploddy. Maybe we need to tune engineer some of the uh, complex areas and the graphs, but in principle, this should work, but that's still a work in progress to test these methods on higher plotty like six or beyond. Okay, thank you very much. It looks like the question are over. There have been uh, quite a few. I'm very happy of that. So thanks again, Shilpa, for your amazing talk.